Hello from the Forstronics YouTube channel and welcome to what is the linear voltage regulator specification PSRR or power supply rejection ratio and how it reduces circuit noise. Before I get started, I'll just mention please support Forstronics on Patreon where you can find exclusive content. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the Forstronics YouTube channel. And if you like what you see here, please hit the thumbs up. All right, let's dive into PSRR. Okay, so what is the power supply rejection ratio specification or PSRR? Well, it's an integrated circuit's ability to reject or attenuate noise from its input power supply signal. And so that noise doesn't get on its output signal, whatever that output signal is. And this is a common specification that you'll find on various ICs, including operational amplifiers, voltage references, and linear regulators. But I found that it's often not well understood. So that's why I chose to do this tutorial. Once again, this spec is found in various types of ICs. I'm going to focus on linear regulators, though, when I talk about this spec. But a lot of what I talk about is applicable to other ICs with the same spec. So who should care about PSR and who shouldn't care about PSR? You should really care about the PSRR spec and look at it closely when you're working with circuits and designs that are sensitive to noise. So for instance, if you're just working on a low cost design that's not sensitive to noise, you know, a lot of times I don't even look at the PSRR spec on the linear regulator. I'm more focused on cost and things like that. But recently I did a design where I was working with a precision ADC or analog to digital converter along with a front end op amp for that circuit. And in that case, I was concerned about electrical noise, right? So I was looking for linear regulators with high PSRR specs. And we'll talk about the spec and how to read it in more detail later in the presentation. But you should only really care about if you're working with noise sensitive circuits. I mentioned ADCs. Maybe you're working with a RF design where you have a RF communication receiver that you're capturing some kind of Wi-Fi signal and you don't want noise to get in that signal and corrupt your data. Maybe you're working with precision clocks or low power, high speed digital communication designs. So some, those are some examples where you might care about noise and want to look at that linear regulators PSRR spec. Now, before we get into the nuts and bolts of the PSRR specification, it's important that I point out that there's two main types of voltage regulators out there, two main architectures. Now, there's more than two, but these are the two main ones. And when I say regulator for this presentation, I'm just going to say voltage regulator. Of course, you could have a current regulator that does constant current instead of constant voltage, but for simplicity, we're just going to talk about constant voltage. So you could have a switch mode based regulator. A lot of times this is like a DC to DC converter, right? And so the way that this is converting a, a voltage level to another voltage level is it takes the signal, chops it up into a pulse width modulated signal, and the, the pulse width modulation of that signal changes based on the load conditions on the DC output. So you're taking that pulse width modulated signal, you're filtering it through a bunch of caps and typically through an inductor to try and get the desired constant DC voltage on the output. Now, this is a great design or a great approach for power conversion because it's highly efficient, but they're also noisy. And, and why are they noisy? Because the filtering is trying to get a DC level out, which it does, but it's not able, it's not perfect. So you're going to get noise from that pulse width modulated switching frequency on your DC signal. And we'll look at an example of that. On the other hand, linear regulators are great because they basically use a transistor or MOSFET to act as a adjustable resistor, right? So based on, let's say you have five volts in, you're trying to get 3.3 volts out. You basically adjust the MOSFET or turn on the MOSFET to a point where you get that 3.3 volts out. And then as the load or the current changes, the resistance of that MOSFET is adjusted. And since you don't have any switching elements, you're not creating a bunch of noise. but you're also just burning a lot of power through that MOSFET. So it's not very efficient. So typically linear regulators are used in low power applications. So a lot of times designs will have a switch mode regulator like your cell phone, your Oculus, or your TV as sort of the downstream power conversion device. And it may have multiple DC to DC converters in it. But then when you get to the sensitive circuits or the low power circuits, that's where the linear regulators come in. So often designs have a mix of linear and switch mode based. The reason I wanted to make sure that this is clear is that the switch mode based regulator is creating the noise. And for our sensitive circuits, we can use a linear regulator 
with a high PSRR spec to help attenuate that noise from our sensitive circuit. And here's a diagram of sort of what I was talking about, where most designs will have some type of DC to DC converter or AC to DC power supply that creates that efficient power conversion, but it creates a noisy signal. And then a linear regulator, and you can see in this diagram, I have it represented as a low pass filter, can change that voltage, but also help attenuate some of that noise, right? So once again, I'm not saying that a linear regulator is a filter. It's a device that regulates a higher voltage to a lower voltage, but the PSR spec can be a secondary benefit when you're working with noise sensitive signals. There's probably a lot of people out there that have never looked at a DC signal coming from a DC to DC converter. So I captured that here with an oscilloscope. So what you're looking at is a zoomed in screenshot from an oscilloscope. An oscilloscope basically measures a signal DC or AC and the Y axis is amplitude and the X axis is time. So I have my Y axis access set for 200 millivolts for each one of these squares, right? And so these are from two different DC to DC converters. And the purpose here is to show that not all noise signals are going to be the same, right? So the top one is a 12 volt signal coming from a buck converter. The reason I know the switching frequency is seven kilohertz is because I measured the time between these peaks here, right? So this is remnants of the switching or the pulse width modulated signal that the output filtering is not able to fully attenuate. Once again, this is actually a DC signal, but you can see you get over 400 millivolts peak to peak of noise up to, right? So if you think your DC levels are actually DC, they're, they're not. There's going to be noise on them, right? Now, the bottom one is a boost converter. So it has a higher switching frequency, which typically leads to better efficiency. Uh, so about one megahertz switching frequency. And then we're going to have a little less than 400 millivolts peak to peak. And they have ones that have even less noise. If you buy a really cheap one, it's going to have more noise. And the frequency range could vary, right? So it could be 200 kilohertz switching frequency, or it could be 2.5 megahertz switching frequency, right? So the point is, is if you're trying to attenuate noise from your circuit, and you're looking at a linear regulator's PSRR, power supply rejection ratio spec, a lot of times that spec is tied to certain frequencies. So it's important to know the noise that your circuit's gonna see to help you choose the right linear regulator with the right PSRR spec. Okay, so let's dive into what the PSRR spec is and how it's calculated. So it's represented as a ratio in dB or decibels, right? So this is a log-based calculation. But essentially, it's the delta input voltage to the delta output voltage or the change in the input voltage and how that change is translated to the output voltage, right? So this is a ratio. We're looking at a ratio. Now, this PSR spec is not calculated in a bubble. There's other conditions or states that are important that go with it. The first one is frequency, right? That, that change in V input is typically done at a certain frequency. So it may be 100 hertz. Uh, one kilohertz, 10 kilohertz, so on and so forth. And the way that IC manufacturers come up with this spec is they take a very clean DC level and they modulate it with typically like a sine wave at different frequencies. And then they see if we have a linear regulator, how much of that sine wave is shown through to the output because of the output, we just want DC. And they use that ratio to give the PSR specs. And like I mentioned, it's typically done at different frequencies. And we'll look at some examples also, you typically see it done at different input voltages. What is the output current when the test is done? Typically, the higher the output current, the, more, the less PSR, PSRR you'll get, right? And just as an example, I'm kind of showing like, okay, if you have a, a rejection spec of 10 dB or an attenuation ratio of 10 dB, that means you're going to get about 30 some percent of that signal out. If you have at 100 dB, then you're getting barely any of it out, right? So it ranges, and this is a logarithmic, so a nonlinear type way to uh, show a spec. So here, what I did is I grabbed a couple example linear regulators, right? And I'm not saying that these are good or bad linear regulators. They're just meant to provide an example. So here's a linear regulator where it's not, its focus is not a high power supply rejection ratio specification. You typically know when you're working with a linear regulator that has a high PSRR spec, because they'll typically have it 
headlined on the front page of the data sheet, right? This, this design was not looking for a high PSR spec, but I still wanted to show it as an example. So when you go into the electrical characteristics of the data sheet for the linear regulator, they'll typically have a section for PSRR, right? And sometimes they'll call it like supply ripple rejection, right? So sometimes it's not called PSRR, but PSRR is the most common way to, to, to represent it. Now notice they're giving it for frequencies, right? So at one kilohertz and an output of 30 milliamps, they're going to say you get 40 dB. So if you have noise that's at about one kilohertz, you're going to attenuate it by 40 dB. Then they have for 500 kilohertz and one megahertz. So this is nice, but typically if you go further in the data sheet, they'll have charts showing PSR over different frequencies. And sometimes they'll have more than one chart because they'll have different load conditions for the different charts. So here you can see they have different colors for the different input voltage setting. And notice they're specifying the output, the load current, and your capacitor, your bypass capacitor settings. Now notice this one has about 4550 at lower frequencies, and then all of a sudden it really drops off to less than 10 dB at higher frequencies. Now, if you notice this uh, 30 or 40 dB at one megahertz doesn't really match this chart, right? Well, that's because this chart is showing you at 200 milliamps and this electrical specification is showing it at 30 milliamps. So just be careful when you go to the banner or the headline spec, as I like to call it, they'll try to put it in the best light, right? But as you go up in current, typically PSR gets worse. So this chip can do up to 200 milliamps. So I really want to know what is the PSR at 200 milliamps. Maybe if you're using it at low powers, then you care about this, but just be careful there. Don't get fooled by the load current they're showing. Make sure the load current matches the load current you're going to be using in your design. Here's another example of a linear regulator where they do have the PSR spec right on the front page of the data sheet. And you can see this one is almost double what the other one is at low frequency. So over 100 dB at low frequencies. They put their headline spec here at just one frequency point, 100 hertz, right? So 100 dB, 100 hertz, but only one fifth of the current. Like this one does a max current of 50 milliamps. This is only at one fifth of the max current. One thing that this chip does that most linear regulators do, the one I just showed doesn't do this, but a lot of times the headline PSR spec is done at 100 hertz or 120 hertz. And the reason is, is because of AC to DC power supplies, depending on what part of the world you're in, you're, you're using you know, a 50 hertz or a 60 hertz AC signal that you convert to DC. Power supplies today use bridge rectifiers. Bridge rectifiers take that frequency and create a pulsating DC signal that's twice the frequency. So if you have 50 hertz, creates a pulsating DC signal that's 100 hertz, and if you have 60 hertz, 120 hertz. So that's why a lot of times the headline PSRR spec is at either 100 hertz or 120 hertz. But once again, as I mentioned, always go to the chart. So you can see this chart shows this and compared to the other linear regulator, this only goes up to one kilohertz. So they're really just trying to show you how this is good at low frequencies. Whereas the other one gave you the spec out to 10 megahertz. So as you can see, the spec is not always equivalent and you want to Pick one out that basically helps attenuate the frequency range you care about. You know, if you're working with low frequency precision ADC measurements, you're probably going to care more about the low frequency PSRR. If you're working with RF circuits, you're going to care more about the high frequency PSRR. So that's why you want to know your circuit, know your noise to help you pick out the best PSRR spec. Okay, as an example, I'm showing another oscilloscope capture. And here we have a five volt DC to DC converter. So this is a switch based architecture. It's switching at about one megahertz and you can see a little bit more than 200 millivolts peak to peak, right? So this is actually less noise than those 12 volt DC to DC converters we looked at earlier, but we still have some noise that's related to the switching frequency. I have this signal going into a 3.3 volt LDO or low dropout linear regulator doesn't have a great PSRR spec, but the idea is I'm measuring on one channel of the oscilloscope, the input to the regulator, which is the five volt DC to DC converter signal, and then the output of the linear regulator. And you can see the noise does get through and you can see that these are measured at the same time because you can see the noise you know, is at the same point in time, but 
the noise on the LDO is attenuated. It's not as strong as it was on the original signal, right? So that is the PSRR in action. Now at one megahertz, you can see this regulator, you know, this oscilloscope is only an eight bit oscilloscope. So this is not a highly accurate measurement, but you can see you're probably getting around 10 dB of attenuation, which is not too bad at one megahertz. You can definitely find regulators that'll do better though at that frequency. The other thing to keep in mind is you're not going to be able to knock out all the power supply noise with your linear regulator, but your op amp, let's say you're using an op amp, that's going to have its own PSRR spec, right? So you take five volts, you turn it into 3.3 volts, but you also reduce the noise. And then the op amp will have further attenuation based on its PSRR spec. So a lot of times you have multiple ICs that are helping to reduce the power supply noise. Okay. So just to summarize, when you're looking at linear rec regulators, if you're not working with noise sensitive circuits, then who cares about PSR? You don't need to worry about it. But if you are, that's when you want to pay close attention to the power supply rejection ratio specification. Remember, don't just look at the headline PSR spec, which is typically 100 hertz or 120 hertz and is typically done at very low load currents, right? That's a starting point. You want to go to those, those charts to get the real picture of PSR. Also, when you configure your linear regulators, you want to configure it according to the data sheet with the right bypass capacitors and the capacitors right up against the pins of the linear regulators. Otherwise, you're not going to get that warranty PSRR spec. So you want to try to be aware of what noise frequencies you care about, right? If you're measuring low frequency signals with an ADC, then you care about PSRR at low frequencies. You don't care about it at high frequencies because that high frequency noise will just get integrated and averaged out of your measurement. If you're working with RF communications, then you care about the high frequency noise. All right, that's it for this tutorial. If you have any questions, please use the comment section. And if there's anything you think I missed or you want to add, please also use the comment section. Thank you for watching.